for EC, barely an inconvenience. Hey everybody, Dave here. How y'all doing tonight? We're back with another episode, again looking at The Mandalorian. And as always, waiting in the wings, Greg. But we're going to make sure his sound is turned on this time before I switch over. And we're going to make sure that I have the right set of things up in front of me so that he actually comes on the screen right now. How are you doing tonight, Greg? I'm doing well. How about you? I remember to get everything this time. Yes. <laughs> uh, it's been an interesting week here. We were talking a little bit off camera. We'll just spare you the details, but the week has been interesting, and Greg's has too. Absolutely, especially when uh, you have a baby on the way. That uh, definitely adds some uh, interesting adventures to uh, to your life. Absolutely. And much like the Land Mandalorian, a baby changes everything. Yes. So, everybody, just so you know, the smoke's going to be hanging around a little bit because things have gotten cooler here. And, uh, well, I had to move my fan and it needs to be turned off now. So, I got to find another fan that's quiet so I can move the smoke. But it's a pipe because it's a half pipe smoking show. So, I guess you can. Do right. It. What are you smoking tonight, Greg? Um, I am smoking um, Seattle Pipe Club's uh, Plum Pudding in my Peterson uh, 01, which I picked up in Dublin. Uh, oh, it's, nice. Uh, yeah, it's a very nice, it's almost like a dark purplish color, but it's it's so faint to see. It's a, just a really unique uh, color, and I was quite taken by it when I saw it on the, the shelves there. So um, it's been... Uh, one of my fa old faithfuls ever since. Good stuff, good stuff. Yeah, and how about you? I am smoking the Charlestown Cobbler. Yes. I can never, I always get those two confused. That And it's the one that you sent me when you were in Chicago. Thank you very much. And yep, in it, uh, I am smoking some Brigham Pipe Tobacco made for the Brigham Pipe Company that was originated here in Canada. And it's natural Cavendish. It's just Cavendish Virginia tobacco. Tobacco. It's light. It's airy. It's aromatic. It doesn't taste like much. It's a nice light smoke. Yeah, it's a kind of a uh, type of tobacco that you like to want to smoke around people that uh, don't normally uh, like smoking. Mm-hmm. Or if you just want to break from an English blend. Right, is what I'm having. Maybe later, maybe later. Okay. So aside from that, um, we, we should uh, move just right on into the Mandalorian. We're just to pull back. Oh wait, we do have some housekeeping first. Uh, there's been a lot of activity this week. I was surprised. There have been quite a few views on the two video, two or three videos we have up, the trailer and the previous, previously two episodes. And uh, we've had, last last time we talked numbers, we were up to seven or eight or so. We're mm -hmm. up to 16 subscribers now on the YouTube channel. That's awesome. So I'm going to call you guys all out and let you do, just say thank you to everybody who subscribed to the, since the last time we talked about it. So, thank you very much for subscribing to Jim Friedman, Flat Cat Piper, Andrew, Andrew Charter, Ernest Picasso. I don't know if he's related to the Picasso, but he probably gets that all the time. And your friend, Mark Myers. Yes. He and I go way back. Former roommate of mine. And Mark, if you're watching and or listening, thank you for the suggestion. I've been working on it for a while. I just got to get the right uh, right music to download, but it's in the works. Yes. Anyhow, 
Thank you to everybody who has been supporting us thus far, even though, you know, most people get thanked for their financial support, but we're not doing that. We don't have financial support at the moment. Don't need it right now. We're not going to ask for it unless we do. Right. Hopefully we don't. Uh, but thank you for any if for supporting us anyway, because when you subscribe on YouTube and do all that stuff, it actually, I guess, helps. I'm not proficient in the ways of YouTubing yet, even though I've been doing channels myself personally for a few years now. It's just not something that I paid attention to because, well, I just didn't really care too much. I figured if people watch it, they watch. If they don't, they don't. But we're getting some good interest here, so it's something i got to pay attention to now. Yeah, well, I appreciate, I know we appreciate anybody that's willing to listen to us, uh, you know, chat about uh, the things that we're enjoying. Mm -hmm. I mean, we do it anyway. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But, you know, the fact that people are, you know, wanting to listen, you know, it, it means a lot. Mm -hmm. And absolutely keep the feedback coming, like, like Mark's suggestion about having some music playing in the background as soon as I find some non-copyright usable music that I can download and get into the into the background it will be there it's, it's something I've had in my head for a few weeks since I started since we started actually it's just a matter of I found some things but I don't want to run too many programs on the computer at the same time so it's got to go yeah. in in post and the music I want to use is on a YouTube playlist which means there's video to it as well that doesn't translate very well to getting onto your uh, computer. If I can find, uh, I should get in touch with the guy who put it up there for use because it's a uh, one guy owns it. It's free to use. He's a he's a he's a streamer, and a lot of I guess a lot of gamers use this music as in the background. And it's I've listened to it. It's some chill music. I've listened to it playing it on YouTube while I've been uh, doing gaming myself, and it's it's a nice listen. And, He's got some good stuff there, and it would work well in the background. It's just a matter of we got to get it some way that I can work with it. Right, and we want something that uh, if we need to, we can remove it without it ruining the episode. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, uh, just with how YouTube's always evolving and changing, you always have to have uh, an escape plan in case uh, you know your video gets pulled because of music. Because we don't want to have. Uh, any lost episodes out there like Doctor Who? Or... Right. And if something like that does happen, I have the videos anyway, so get in touch. If there's an episode missing from the YouTube channel because it's been pulled. funny because I actually I, I split it up between watching part of it last week and last week today. Um, but it is a, you know, this was the episode where uh, everything kind of goes down. And uh, you know, now that we've been introduced to the you know, characters so far, you know, it's uh, you know, the main of the line is kind of up with a choice. You can, and it's a, a really compelling one too. You can just simply take his reward and uh, let, every, let everything stay the same. You know, leave it, you don't ask any questions. Uh, just go on his merry way. Or he can get involved in and get the, the child back. And of course, you know, it, it wouldn't be much of a show if he didn't go after the child. Obviously, it makes the like, moral choice and uh, check in on the child and uh, the rescue zone. And it's a, it's a cool episode, too. Uh, I, I, I enjoyed the conversations that the Mandalorian has with the, the good leader, you know, telling him, hey, you know, like, you relax, you've earned it, you know, don't ask questions, just kind of, you know, enjoy, enjoy life. But He's all business, and mm -hmm. he's, you know he can't stop thinking about uh, what could happen to uh, you know, the baby. Yeah, because the kid is a baby. Like it might be fifty, but it is an infant. Right. 
But uh, we also got some uh, pretty cool toys for for this episode. Mm-hmm. With the um, is it the whistling birds? I think that's what it was called. It was either whistling birds or singing birds. I'm not sure which. Yeah, one of the two. But uh, I mean that that was obvious. What I liked too is it, it also it, it, again it felt like a video game. Like yeah. In some senses, it not did. in the. Uh, it's like okay, you beat the last level, and you got your reward, and now we're upgrading your uh, your build to have this uh, new toy to take care of the uh, situations. It's also a little uh, James Bondish, I guess. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's uh, the cool stuff too. So, you know, you can't go wrong with a guy in armor with awesome weapons like, uh, you know, homing mini missiles and flamethrowers. Oh no, no, you can't. That's just that's just great stuff right there. Oh yeah. And. Uh, of course, you know, the, the cool part about this episode was just uh, the moment when, uh, you know, he makes the escape with the baby Yoda and, like, all the different bounty hunters, you know, they each get kind of like a, a notification that uh, to basically hunt the Mandalorian. And it, and it slowly, like, builds and, you know, Mando's, you know, walking down the the road and it's nice and atmospheric with it being all dark out and everything and uh, eventually you know see the different characters getting the notification until finally everybody's surrounded him uh, for the big showdown you know nice uh, nice little western motif there too absolutely yeah it's uh you know, hand over the hand over the baby, or else, and Mandalorian chooses to fight it out. I mean, really, who wouldn't choose to fight it out over a baby? Right. And if oh, well, I mean, there's some people that would uh, that would uh, choose the choose their lives over the baby, but not the Mandalorian. No, and and certainly, if you're one of those people and you're listening. Don't tell us. We don't want to hear it. Absolutely. But it, it was just exciting overall. And also, uh, I kind of glossed over it, but uh, when the Mandalorian uh, makes the decision to finally go after uh, and rescue Baby Yoda, like that whole sequence was uh, really exciting too. Mm-hmm. It certainly illustrates why the Mandalorians throughout Star Wars uh, are so revered. Because when you're watching the original trilogy, the only Mandalorian type character you see is Boba Fett. And yet, he seems to have a respect that the other bounty hunters don't because he's wearing the Mandalorian armor. And that was played throughout the appearances he made. Right. I mean, he definitely, the way that he carries himself is different from the rest of the bounty hunters, too. Mm-hmm. Like, the others kind of feel more scummy, kind of more uh, your traditional kind of, like, uh, rough bruiser types uh, or, you know, people that would betray you. The, mm-hmm. the Mandalorian seems more, I guess, lawful neutral. Yeah. You know, he's not going to, he's not necessarily going to backstab you. He's going to stab you in the front. Yeah. You're going to die, but you're going to know who did it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's gonna, you're going to know it's a Mandalorian. Right. And yeah, the, the fight that he had with the, the stormtroopers in uh, going to rescue the baby you know, that was a that was a fun fight. Uh, I really enjoyed that, and and the shootout too at the end was uh, was nice and exciting, especially when the other Mandalorians showed up and uh, added their uh, you know fighting skills to the fight. 
Right. I mean, this is the first time in Star Wars history we've seen a group of Mandalorians fighting together if you haven't watched any of the animated fare. Mm-hmm. But uh, it was a great show of how Mandalorian culture actually works. Because they were arguing earlier in the episode over where the Beskara came from, given that it was from the, uh, the Purge and this, uh, this particular metal came from that great Purge. And they're kind of upset with Mando because he's been dealing with former Imperials. And there's a whole bunch of backstory that gets dropped on you in that few minutes. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's, it's a lot of development for people who, like I said before, haven't watched the uh, animated fair where there's more Mandalorian uh, content coming in from uh, Star Wars Rebels. Right. Yeah, and I haven't, this is all new to me because uh, the first time I had heard about Mandalorians was the announcement of the show. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, it's, it's fun for me to kind of see this world open up. Yeah, and it's it's neat too because the stuff that they have uh, been, so I've watched Rebels and I, I thought it was good. It's one of the shows that I'll probably, I've been away from it for a bit. I'll probably rewatch it down the road a bit. Because you know as well as I do, with the with the new baby on the way, there are going to be some times where I have to stay up with her, so that the wife can get to sleep. Right. I guess you, I know that better than you right now because you still haven't had your your son yet. <laughs> so I've already experienced this. This is something for you down the road for the first time. Uh, I know. <laughs> uh, I was looking on Facebook earlier today, and uh, some uh, a mother had posted a, a thing of like things to do when um to practice uh having a baby if you have no experience and one of them was like uh, set the alarm to go off every two to three hours uh don't fall asleep until uh you know the last 15 minutes before set alarm goes off and then one of them was um uh, for the mother's uh uh, plot your husband's death as you watch him sleep peacefully <laughs> as you take care of the baby. Oh, that's funny. Um, the, the alarm every two to three hours, not necessarily necessary. Mm. Not all children do that. I've got three kids with the fourth on the way, and the oldest one did that only because he was made to. Because that's what we were told, and... Um, the nurses woke him up every two to three hours to feed him. And then we summarily ignored it with the second one, and he was still up, not every two to three hours, mind you, but more than than a bit. And the, the youngest one that um, is here, he slept through the night since day one. Hmm. So it really just depends on the kid. My right. suggestion is... If you can, try not to wake them up every two to three hours because you'll get more sleep. Yeah. I think I will uh, try to do that. Plus, if the kid's hungry, he'll wake up. Oh, yeah. Daddy will. That's a dad talk for the, for the episode. And yes, and, and so uh, Syndicated Pipe Club will end on that note. Thanks for watching and uh, <laughs> hope you had your had, 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 had some fun listening to dad talk. <laughs> I what guess a horrible uh, note to end on, wouldn't it be? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. Uh, I have a feeling this is this might be uh, one of the um, segments that we add into <laughs> this podcast. Yeah, Which, it, it uh, might and, come up a lot. <laughs> yeah, which I guess is fitting, you know, considering, you know, with... Uh, you know, pipe smoking, you know, fatherly figures and everything. So, yeah. Yeah, it'll work. I'm sure it'll work. But yeah, it, it, this particular episode of The Mandalorian, you mentioned it before we started uh, on air, but uh, it doesn't lead much to conversation because it's pretty straightforward. 
Guy brings in Bounty, sees that the kid might be mistreated, tries to find out what's going on, finds out the kid's being mistreated, kills people who mistreat the kid, and leaves. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it's very simple, but uh, again, like, I'm reminded, of, and it's a, this is going to be a weird show to kind of bring up, um, but uh, it always kind of sticks with me because I think it uh, transcends what it was originally from. But uh, on the Great British Baking Show, uh, there is a contestant that uh, did a lot of, while everyone did a lot of complex stuff, he did more simple and basic things. And he didn't last too long, but uh, they said that, uh, and the judges on the show basically said, you know, it's okay to do simple. You know, there's nothing wrong with doing like a, a simple or a classic bake, but uh, it just has to be executed flawlessly. Yeah. And yeah. that's exactly what we have is something that's a story that's, you know, not too complex. It, it's, it's fairly basic, but the build and everything from beginning to end is done so well that uh, I, and honestly for me, I'm kind of tired of all the big like twists and turns that have been done, you know, as of late in films. Like, you know, on one hand you have a film like The Prestige, which has, you know, good twists and everything, but then you get Iron Man 3 where it's like, oh, the wait, uh, the Mandarin isn't the villain? He's like uh, just a, a joke nobody? What? And it just like twist after twist after twist. And to the point where it's just like, okay, like, I have no idea what, uh, you know, this isn't the film that I, I wanted. And with this, like, I'm enjoying what it has. Yeah. That was one of the things I enjoyed for the first time through with The Mandalorian as well. And like, no, no super big twists. Nice and simple. You know, you got your, your odd twist, like Baby Yoda at the end of episode one. Um, there's a few other ones that are small, but have meaning to them that happen down the road. So beyond that, I won't mention them anymore. Because spoilers. And uh, yeah, it's just a very simple show that's very well executed. Yeah. And you know, too, it, like... A twist, a twists are good, but you can only really do the twist once for the surprise, and then it's just known. And so then it becomes a matter, is the twist a good storytelling device? And instead of, uh, because you, can, you can't really depend on that surprise, you know, after repeat viewings. So, you know, you have, you know, Empire Strikes Back, mm -hmm. you know, Luke, I'm your father, you know, that you know that's interesting and it doesn't i mean in some ways it kind of comes out of nowhere but it's done in such a way that when you rewatch um a new hope you're you're seeing everything from the idea of okay these two are related and only vader really knows that it, uh, from the little bit that he sees of luke mm. I see you're close, but Vader doesn't realize that he has a daughter until the last of those three movies mm. at the end. But yeah, you're right. It Watching it through the lens, of going back and watching episode four, A New Hope, in the guise of you already know what happens with the reveal in um, Empire Strikes Back, you certainly see things a little bit differently right and, and uh you know conversely <laughs> you have return of the jedi where it's like oh luke and leia are brother and sister oh they kissed and uh <laughs> which uh changes that moment in uh, <laughs> a new hope yeah that re that re that really changes that moment <laughs> But from some of the things I've read online and whatnot, the uh, the Carrie Fisher and Mark Hamill and Harrison Ford, 
they, according to what they've said and what I've seen other sources say, they didn't even know that the Anakin was slash Darth Vader was the father themselves until it was revealed during filming for, and it, yeah, it was during filming because apparently mm-hmm. the, the script and somebody who's a bigger Star Wars nerd than I can correct me if I'm wrong, but from my understanding, the script actually had a different line there and nobody knew it until either during the filming or since James Earl Jones wasn't the actor on set, they didn't know it until they saw it. Mm-hmm. Because I think that's what they did that in ADR. I, I think the original thing that was supposed to be there was that uh, Obi-Wan killed his father. Uh, Luke's father. I think that was the original line that the a Vader actor was saying, and then, you know, Earl James Earl Jones did, did the Luke, I am your father, uh, you know, you know, style line. I do know, I, know you're, I know you're falling, I know you are, I notice you are falling prey to the, uh, the I, I, Luke, I am your father line, because that's not what's said there. No, I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's why, that's why I, I corrected it a, a little bit. But then again, I, I, I can't think of the line off the top of my head, so... You killed my father. No, I am your father. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, that fits. Yeah, I know I know it's not the Luke I am your father. That's more of the lines of the lines that everyone says that didn't really happen. That's like beam me up Scotty from Star Trek. Never once. Never once. There are a couple of lines that were close, but Never once in the original series did William Shatner say those lines. But yeah, anyway, um, like like we said, there's really not much to talk about this episode of The Mandalorian. It's pretty straightforward. Yeah, uh, I loved it. So, you know, just a, a lot of great, great action. And I love the the ending where the Mandalorian's flying away, and uh, the one uh, Mandalorian flies by and salutes him while uh, going on the jetpack. And Mando says, uh, "I need to get one of those." Yeah, that was a good line. I also enjoyed the Mandalorian giving uh, Baby Yoda the little ball thing, kind of like a here, distract yourself. Here's some keys. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, yeah. Mando already doing the fatherly stuff. Shiny these are. Hmm, shiny. Distracted am I. You guys at home don't know, but these have been played with by one of my kids, so I gotta fix them later. They're driving me bananas. <laughs> But anyway, I think we'll call it there because I just don't have anything else to say. The episode was great, and that's it. We've talked it out. Yeah, I would I, I would say so. Again, great, great episode. I'm looking forward to seeing episode four. Absolutely. So if you want to keep up with us throughout the, the week, you can always follow me at drallen201 on any social media platform. If you didn't know, and 30 of you at least at this point do, we have a Twitter for the account now. You can follow the uh, the show at uh, Syndicated Pipe on Twitter. And we have a website, which I will also throw the link into the description down below. And what I did know with Wix when I made it and discovered it this week is that they have a mobile app that you can also join us on. I will throw an invite link with the code in the description down below as well. So that if you have, want to download the Wix app on iPhone or Android and follow us that way, it's an option. Greg, how about you? Yeah, you can follow me on Twitter at uh, the underscore Badger Piper and on Instagram at the Badger Piper, one word. And there you can uh, see my occasional updates that I do, uh, which I'm sure will be much rarer once uh, once my son arrives. 
Very much. You will lose all kinds of running time. That's why I started doing videos. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, if you want to give us an email instead of all that other stuff and uh, you just want to play it a little simpler, just give us a shout at reverseflashtime at gmail.com and we'll be glad to get back to you on anything and everything that you send in suggestions your opinions on the show we might be watching because it's available on disney plus you can watch it with us absolutely and you can always comment on our youtube video uh be sure to like and subscribe there and believe me folks one of these days i'm going to write a script for this particular ending and send it to greg so that we're working off the same format instead of just winging it every time yes <laughs> <laughs> but anyway as as you might have heard me say a few times Thanks for watching. Have some good smokes, and I hope you have some good entertainment this week. Have a good night.